Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jesse Leons. This edition's top stories, Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chasney activates a NEMAC as community cases of COVID-19 increase. Infrastructure upgrades set for ancillary as village tourism takes shape. And fishermen receive life-saving equipment. On Friday, October 16, 2020, the Ministry of Health received confirmation of one new case of COVID-19. The individual is a 14-year-old male, the son of recently diagnosed cases 30 and 31 from Castries. The individual was swabbed following the diagnosis of his parents and placed in quarantine given his high risk of exposure to the virus. At that time, he had no respiratory signs and symptoms. Upon receiving his results, he was transferred to the respiratory hospital for care. This case will continue the current efforts of the ministry's contact tracing team, which had commenced with the diagnosis of cases, his parents, COVID-19 cases 30 and 31. Given this new case is a secondary school student, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar george says the necessary discussions are underway with the Ministry of Education and the management of the school. The Cabinet of Ministers met in emergency session on Friday morning to discuss the unfolding developments. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chasney has activated the National Emergency Management Advisory Committee, NEMAC. A special meeting was held Friday afternoon. Lisa Joseph reports. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chasney told the NEMAC meeting that at this time the country will not be shut down nor will curfew be imposed. Rather, strict enforcement of established protocols by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force will be in effect as the Ministry of Health manages what is now community spread of COVID-19. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar george says a contact tracing app will be introduced to aid in the fight. All schools island-wide will remain closed for one week and the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School closed for two weeks. During this period, the Ministry of Health and Wellness will continue to conduct its necessary screenings, the results of which will help determine the way forward. The Ministry says instruction will revert to the multifaceted approach of online learning and safe distribution of instructional packages from teachers during the period students are at home. We are presently at 500 persons. The decision to reduce mass crowd activities to, to limit it to 100 as we monitor and manage the situation on the ground. All sectors with the reopen, the phase reopening of the economy presented um, plans, COVID-19 safety plans to allow the safe reopening of their organizations. We noted over the last few weeks a level of complacency and non-adherence to those. There will be strict enforcement of protocols from community markets to nightclubs to dances to beach parties to weddings, funerals, church activities. And boat rides will be limited to family excursions only, um, taking out the, the public boat rides, which pose a risk to us. So all of those activities will be strictly enforced per protocols or run the risk of losing their licensing or being closed within very short um, measures. Also, we're coming close to the Jeune Creole activities. Those will be limited to family home activities, and the community activities will not be um, allowed. Health Minister Senator Mary Isa called on everyone to play their part in keeping the country safe. When you're in a community and you see a person who's supposed to be in Martinique or supposed to be somewhere else and the person just show up, you need to be able to report that to the authorities. You, you, you have to, we all have to do what is necessary for us to contain this virus. It may well be our own lives that we are saving. Prime Minister Alan Chastney stressed that this is not the time for panic, but collective action. The only way we can protect ourselves is by being each other's brother's keeper. It's the only way. And we have to have zero tolerance. We were getting away with it because for the most part we didn't have it in our communities. We now know we have it in our communities. And that's why I'm saying to you, I don't need, we don't need to wait until tomorrow or next week to find out what the numbers are. The remedy is the same. Persons who are currently affected, infected, can't change that. 
We need to try to help them find out that they are infected, get them to quarantine as quickly as possible, but the rest of us need to be safe practices. And I assure you, there's a study that came out today that said if you're in a plane and everybody is wearing their face mask, even if they are, are individuals who have COVID on that plane, you minimize the likelihood of you becoming affected by wearing your mask. The chief medical officer says it is anticipated and expected that St. Lucia would have to manage small waves of COVID-19 without going through extreme measures. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. Ancillary is one of three pilot communities for village tourism, scheduled to undergo upgrades of the waterfront and front street. The upgrades form part of the village tourism community infrastructure improvement component. A check presentation of funds for the initiative was held in the village Thursday, 15th October 2020. Financing for the first village tourism hotel on the island has been secured. This project will form part of the transformation of ancillary backed by the Republic of China-Taiwan to the tune of U.S. $1,865,671 under the Bilateral Corporation Agreement Grant for 2020. Taiwanese Ambassador His Excellency Peter Shen handed over a check for the sum uh, to Tourism Minister and Parliamentary Representative for the area, Honorable Dominic Fede, during a ceremony held at the waterfront of the fishing village on Thursday, 15th October 2020. Ancillary will have the opportunity to host the first village tourism hotel right in the location where the police station building is. That's component number one of the project. There will be 10 bedrooms, and we will put this building up to tender to any resident who would like to run this facility as a small business. The rental fees goes to the village council, and so there's an opportunity for anybody in Ancillary who can come up with a brilliant business proposal to run that facility as your very own business. This will no doubt create uh, several jobs for the community. It will bring about a tremendous economic spin-off. Our shops, our bars, our restaurants are going to be better patronized by our international clientele. Other components of Ancillary's transformation consist of village square redevelopment, rehabilitation of the fish fry building, and a new restaurant to be constructed at the site of the old community center on the waterfront. The Ministry of Infrastructure, they have rendered this building structurally unsound and because the structure is compromised they have actually recommended it for demolition and so by next week we should be rolling in with the excavator and other equipment to demolish this building and let the transformation of a great restaurant begin and on the waterfront here another business opportunity for another business person in ancillary to come and to put a business proposal forward to the village council, working with the Ministry of Tourism, the Ancillary Development Foundation, and we will together determine who has the best ideas to run a proper restaurant facility on the waterfront. Speaking in his capacity and on behalf of the Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chasney, Honorable Guy Joseph expressed thanks to Taiwan for backing the transformation of Ancillary. I must take the opportunity to say special thanks to the government and people of the Republic of China, Taiwan, for such a generous contribution in these difficult times. Further, when we came into government, we sat with the Taiwanese embassy and we said, while we love the tea canal projects and we love the footpaths, and we love the concrete roads. We also want projects that would be revenue generating, that would be job creating, not just in the short term, but in the long term for the people of St. Lucia. And they readily accept it. Ancillary is one of three communities on island receiving attention under the Village Tourism Project. 
Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Donna Lynn Vitti, says work to upgrade Ancillary, Souffre and Grosselet are part of efforts to refine St. Lucia's tourism product pending full recovery of global tourism. Village Tourism Initiative is a vehicle that the government will use to build local inclusion. Too long we have been hearing from community residents that it's expats who own accommodation properties. We want to ensure that you too get your piece of the pie. We want you to become self-sufficient. We want you to assist us in improving the linkages. We need to use the downtime that we have right now because of COVID to get ready so that when the doors finally burst open, we will have our fair, graceful and stately position to announce that St. Lucia is prepared, that Ancillary is prepared. The transformation projects for Ancillary are scheduled for completion in February 2021. As the government of St. Lucia continues efforts to reduce impacts of climate change, the fishery sector has received much-needed equipment. Over 200 VHF radios, valued at 80,000 U.S. dollars, has been presented to fishers. More from Manicia Antoine. The Departments of Fisheries and Telecommunications, in collaboration with the Global Environment Facility, GEF, and the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, through the Climate Change Adaptation in the Eastern Caribbean Project, CC4 Fish Project, have procured a total of 200 very high-frequency radios for fisherfolk around the island. The VHF radios will enable fishermen to dialogue over substantial distances on marine radio channels and is an invaluable fishing tool that alerts marine police during moments of distress. Two marine repeaters have also been purchased for the north and south of the island in an effort to reinitiate the use of VHF radios amongst fisherfolk. Acting Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Herod Stanislas, says the procurement of these equipment is in keeping with the objective of the CC4 Fish Project to increase resilience and reduce vulnerability to climate change impacts in the Eastern Caribbean fisheries sector. The installation of the marine repeaters and distribution of the VHF radios are contributing to the second overarching goal of the National Adap Adaptation Plan for St. Lucia, which is to accelerate the implementation of climate adaptation and risk reduction actions critical to safeguarding the country's socio-economic and environmental systems. Furthermore, the introduction of the VHF radios are consistent with the expected outcomes of the St. Lucia Fisheries Sectoral Adaptation Strategy Action Plan by strengthening preparedness for climate vari variability and extremes in the fisheries sector. Parliamentary Representative for Ancillary Canaries, Honorable Dominic Fede, expressed gratification on behalf of the fishermen of his constituency for the newly acquired equipment. For a long time now, you've heard stories about fishermen being lost at sea. We can't find them. Their loved ones, their families go through the agony, the pain. And I think that this is going to help to address that problem. So really congratulations to the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Fisheries for a well thought out um, initiative. It is quite important what they're doing. And I, I support it wholeheartedly, representing a constituency where many of the residents there do rely on fishing for their livelihoods. The license fee for the VHF radios have been waived by the government of St. Lucia. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, continues to lend support to St. Lucian farmers. Here's Anisia Antoine once again. In an effort to increase farmer production and sustainability, the Ministry of Agriculture, in partnership with the Taiwan ICDF, have been supporting farmers with various initiatives, including farmer training in areas of product development and marketing. At the recently held graduation ceremony for the 2020 Region 6 Farmer Training, the Ambassador of the Republic of China Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Shen, reaffirmed his government's commitment to assisting St. Lucian farmers. According to the statistics, uh, St. Lucia spends more than 6 million EC dollars importing fruits and vegetables such as cabbage, watermelon, cantaloupe, and tomatoes each year. And the import value has been increasing. So why if we could purchase them locally? 
instead of by, uh, buying from overseas, and more spe specifically, buying from your farms. So that's the reason why the government of Taiwan is working with the government of St. Lucia to promote local produce and consumption of the seven important crops on a sustainable basis and hosting this uh, training program. A participant of the 2020 farmer training, Iverson Kalixt, encouraged farmers to make use of the knowledge received throughout the training. I also want to encourage us all not only correctly apply the practices from this certification course, but also to hold one another accountable for doing so. Our value to the St. Lucian economy cannot be overstated, but we must cement this by infusing our knowledge into our daily practice. Moreover, I wish to encourage our farming community that although we may be operating in a competitive environment, that we work collaboratively as we share a common objective of improving the overall agricultural sector in St. Lucia. The 2020 Farmer Training for Region 6 forms part of a series of programs done by the Agriculture Ministry with support from the Taiwan Technical Mission and the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, ICA, under the enhancement of the efficiency of production distribution supply chains in the fruits and vegetable sector project. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquarium. Simple adjustments are necessary to keep us all safe. When calling 911, we may need a little more information to deploy the right personnel and protocols. You may be asked about your travel history, signs and symptoms, contact and movement history, and whether others in your household are exhibiting similar symptoms. Please, be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. Time now for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol with Primus Hutchinson. Monsieur Tan, Jesse, Monsieur Madame Department, qui est responsabilité pour information en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, et Télévision Nationale pays à NTN, qui a Nouvelle en Aquayol, pour cette Primus Hutchinson. Trois derniers cas maladie corona sorti en ces résidents cette ci qui n'a jamais voyagé à l'autre pays, et qu'au résultat de ça, il n'a pas eu maladie à PK, genre quasi mangé en pays. Présentement, cette saison a enregistré 31 cas de maladie corona, 27 ans, j'ai fait très bien, pendant 4 ans, il a continué à trouver traitement à l'hôpital Victoria. C'est gagné les officiers de santé qui ont continué pour conduire l'investigation à ces communes qui ont concerné, et aussi pour l'examiner divers individus, selon le chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belmer George. C'est aussi à une situation qui est très critique à présent en bas maladie corona. Et c'est faux l'année action très sérieuse pour déterminer des degrés succès pour traiter, ménager et protéger nation pour empêcher complications et la mort. Alors, il y a un grand appel qu'a fait pour tout chef en ces communes cette ci Les représentatifs politiques, consultent les paroisses, chefs les organisations en ces communes, religions, clubs, sports et tout le monde qui est en position avec ces diverses communes pour prendre responsabilité, pour guider le conseil public, là, pour prendre toutes les précautions qui sont nécessaires pour réduire à ce risque de maladie de corona. Selon le Dr. Belma George, le ministre de la Santé, Jacques a préparé pour ménager et adresser la situation en meilleure façon qui mérite, et Jacques a préparé pour les cas là commencer à se manger à ces communes. C'est pour ça là qui fait un fait, fait, appel pour supporter tout le monde pour la protection de toute nation. Hein. Particulier les plus grands citoyens et les gens qui ont souffert de mauvaises maladies. Le ministère a continué pour faire un appel pour tout le monde servir de masse à souffrir. Laver la main, rester sur pied de distance ordinaire à l'autre et pour ne pas accumuler et sembler à Gualimo. Toutes ces précautions, c'est pour les gens qui ont en place de travail et pour faire assurer que si vous avez un signe de maladie, allez au docteur immédiatement. En célébration de l'année internationale de santé plein, 
C'est aussi qu'il y a une observation, il y a une observation en collaboration avec les Nations Unies. C'est pour l'occasion que le département des affaires, recherche et développement, le ministère de l'Agriculture, a organisé une cérémonie pour planter divers plans d'armes en effort pour encourager la protection pour la santé plan et pour faire les Nations Unies plus au courant concernant l'importance pour protéger la santé plan. Parce que ça a sauvé la vie, et ça a aussi sauvé l'environnement et ça a augmenté le développement économique. Le ministre de l'Agriculture, la position pour l'agricole pour le moment, on a Harold Stanislas, fait appel pour le public à porter santé, plan plus ouest, comme le changement de climat et l'autre activité par les hommes qui affectent le plan autant. Il dit aussi, les gens qui ont voyagé, qui ont porté maladie sorti de tous côtés de la terre, qui ont affecté le plan. L'organisation agricole, CADI, qui travaille pour le ministère de l'Agriculture pour adopter la meilleure façon pour protéger le plan et la production manger. Le représentatif CADI, c'est ici. Andrea Vieira, du un cérémonie pour planter plan, déclarer que les gens considèrent danger maladie corona au lieu de la terre. Si la terre est une maladie comme ça, qui est affecté plan, qui condition la terre est qu'il pour ni manger? Il y a une cérémonie pour pour lundi passé pour qu'il y ait qui qui te suivent un étonnement pour six semaines, ça c'est les femmes. Étonnement, c'était pour aider et prouver à sa capacité pour produire et distribution en secteur fruits et légumes. Ça, c'est principalement un bas projet 7 d'un que le gouvernement établit pour essayer de réduire à sa dépense pour acheter et manger l'autre pays. Étonnement, tu posé attention à ce plusieurs sujets, par exemple, manière pour adopter de bonne façon pour conduire le travail agricole, manière pour servir avec ménager chimique, production des grilles technologiques pour servir après un cultivateur récolté. Ensemble, et puis la place pour enregistrer les informations concernant les opérations et l'assoupitation agricole. Représentatif ICA, Greg, Greg Williams, non, Greg Rollins, excusez-moi, conseille ces femmes pour ne pas chercher les informations pour les gens, mais pour passer par les autres et supporter les gens à l'autre et apprendre pour travailler ensemble. Si vous n'avez pas le ministère de l'Agriculture, Barry Felicity, ou en France, l'importance pour les cultivateurs, ça veut dire les femmes. Toujours adopter de bonne façon pour le travail agricole. Il y a ces femmes qui ont participé à l'étonnement. Alex Fauché, remercie le ministère de l'Agriculture à ce compte de tous ces participants. Il dit qu'il y a autant à ces divers sujets qui ont servi immédiatement. Et à présent, il n'y a plus de confiance parce qu'ils savent ce que ça peut faire si il y a ces problèmes à terre et chimique. 66 cultivateurs ont participé à l'étonnement. Et monsieur, madame, à ce côté, nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation. Je ne peux pas encore. Si vous avez la vie, vous avez une nouvelle en créole. Et témoin encore conseillé qu'on y a Jadou, qu'on Dr. Belma George Jadou, c'est là pour nous prendre un chai pour caution parce que la situation corona a été très critique à pays. Et nous tous, nous pouvons faire ça, nous pouvons faire pour protéger qu'on nous et protéger l'un à l'autre. Et ça, c'est ce que ça nous a dit. Au gomme là, je vous remercie, je vous souhaite une bonne finance ma semaine et je vous remercie pour ce que vous avez Jesse. Merci à Peel Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or our YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now, but do stay tuned for more NTN programming.